Hello and welcome back. After the last film, a few people said to me, can we have some more detail on the RS200 chassis build? I thought, well, yes, if detail is what you want, there's no shortage of it, let's do some detail. In the last film we completed the repairs fore and aft on the cross member to allow us to put a new lid on so that's all done. If you don't know what that's all about there's a link at the end with the whole playlist of videos that we made up to now so you can look at the anatomy of the car. We also did a little bit more restoring stuff with the resin. We've stepped that up a bit more this time and learned a bit more, done some more repairs. And we've got another repair above that again that we're gonna experiment with at the end of the video. So keep watching, we'll see you at the end. I'm making a start on the new cap for the cross member. So I've cut a piece of steel out. It's actually three pieces I'm using off cuts. So loads of off cuts, I join them together. Doesn't take long. So I've made a new cap for the top. And on there, I have placed the old pieces of scrap that we cut out because they have lightning holes in them. I assume they're lightning holes. And I want to get the position and size of them exactly right. Now, there's four at this end, none in the middle, and then seven at that end. Again, all shoved over there. I think I know why. So I'm going to put the switch holes in and we'll get another look and I'll tell you why I think there's this strange lopsided one-sided arrangement on here. If you want a recommendation for a hole saw you look a long way to do better than these. This is a Bosch setup and it all just clips together so put your drill in, put the cutter on and that's it assembled. That's 27 mil. Oh, by the way, gloves at all times. Didn't listen to me on advice. Grinder got me. That's 27 mil for the lighting hose and the cross member. You just take them out and swap them as required. I would recommend though that you put it in a pillar drill. It's a bit wayward if you try to do it by hand. But if you drill the pilot hole and then use the teeth on there to score where the hole's going to be, put some cutting fluid in, and then through you go. And as long as you do that, these cutters just last forever. We're still on the first set we ever bought. So there you go, recommendation for you. I'll have to ring Bosch and see if I can get sponsored. The final part of the process is to push the swages in. Little swaging tool, eBay special, not expensive. It just pushes the edge of the hole down to make a swage, which adds an enormous amount of strength and it looks really cool and motorsportish at the same time. So I'll fire some swages in. Two things always prepare the edges of the holes that you're about to swage because otherwise if there's rag on them or rough bits it just cuts into the tools i mean these are just aluminium they're not built to last and the second thing is always put a bit of cutting fluid around because again you don't want to be trying to drag dry metal over dry metal just make sure it's got some lube and it'll be much happier basic rule of life i've got a nice wide angle lens but doing this you weren't always looking at some teeny tiny point that's not fair because it makes me look even fatter than I am. And I'm not exactly a slip of a thing, let's be honest. I'm from fat stock. But I look at some of the video and I think, no! And there's either something wrong with the camera lens or there's something wrong with the bathroom mirror. But they can't both be right. So I have to 
inside it, it's the camera lens. And I bet I get on a diet. The wheel center itself. Oops. Not if you do that, it won't. Where's John when I need him? John is normally here, except he messaged earlier to say he wouldn't be because he's having a work late. How dare his employer keep him after hours when he's required in the workshop. Just doing a quick double take because I have never in my life pushed the switch the wrong way and had to start all over again. That's just never ever happened. Well, not today anyway. <laughs> we haven't got the lovely Debs on TGT today. <laughs> I'm videoing you. You're just standing there looking like a titty. <laughs> yes, Al's on TGT today. No uh, Debs. Uh, not working. No, should be here later. And we've got Alby, who's brought the donuts. The donuts. The donuts. 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 You've Greg got to donuts. see it in Scout. Greg's donuts, look. <laughs> Better get Al to make the tea before. Oh no. Did you leave the tea bags in? I don't know what he did, it was a bit grim. That's why I had mortgage and kids, and that was my. Any sort of like a young kid, mortgage, wife, you're not going to f the weekend down the farm, bro. Oh, he's I swear. Yeah, he's done it again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a really nice little shot from the top. Never used to swear up here at all, no. Yeah. No language, Timothy. No. Elbows, Nigel. He's not going to say anything now, is <laughs> he? <laughs> 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 I'll try yeah, to get it. through 15 seconds without swearing. He's done it though, <laughs> by virtue of not saying a thing. Hi to my aunt in Potter's Bar. <laughs> Another handy little tool, which everyone should have. Clico clamps. Very strong, very powerful. Simple set of pliers to put them on. You just compress that, put it on the thing you want to clamp, let it go. There you have it. The next job on the lid for the cross member is to mark off a pitch of holes and drill them so we can plug weld that on. And for the moment it's down with four 332 skin pins, 330 seconds of an inch diameter. Beauty of skin pins, not roofing screws, is that you can get a good hold on them, you can put them in and take them out as many times as you want. With a 332 hole, if you get the position wrong, you can just drill another one next to it and start again and weld it up when you're finished. But it also means that this panel is now down with an accuracy, repeatable accuracy, of about a tenth of a millimetre. We don't need to worry about a tenth of a mil on this panel particularly, but if you did, that's the sort of accuracy you can achieve. That's the cross member lid completely drilled end to end and ready for welding and the puzzle over the four lightning holes at one side and seven at the other isn't a puzzle at all really because the region that has no lightning holes has a pipe passing through it it's a balanced pipe between the fuel tanks to keep the levels equal and on the back face of the cross member is an oval cutout to pass the pipe through and on the bottom face of the cross member is a little rectangular notch to get a spanner on the fitting to tighten the balance pipe. So presumably the engineers were concerned that something spiky would go up through one of the lightning holes and puncture the fuel line. So that's what's actually going on there. Another little detail for you. Well I hope that's not too much detail overload, but there's a bit more. Because this area of honeycomb was dished. And what we've realised is when it's just a dish, it's not one single failure, it's many hundreds of tiny ones from the honeycomb. And because they're tiny they don't mind being pushed back again. So we used an old trick that we used on Bluebird many times and made up some small screw jacks just to push that side out and a tweak with a spanner and a tap with a hammer and out it came. And then we left the screw jacks in and used a conveniently spaced set of big ragged rivet holes that once held the roof on. And we injected resin into them just to consolidate the honeycomb inside in case it had moved and then took the screw jacks out. So this is what the screw jacks looked like. This is what I was talking about regarding the little screw jacks down inside the sill. Really, really simple. Flat plate for a spreader. 
short length of tube, weld it on, short length of M12 stud, nut and a washer, and another spreader for the other side. Pop that in there, and then as you turn the turn the nut, it just extends the thread out through the tube, and you can put a spanner on and just wind it, and that will push very hard. And that is exactly what I've done inside of the honeycomb sill to permanently hold the sill while the resin injections have gone off and it's worked rather well. As you probably noticed, I've had the end cap off this, this end of the cross member. And that was so we get a look at the honeycomb underneath. The actual end cap is in very poor shape. It's rotten. As ever, it's stuck on with a spoonful of rivets that weren't really doing anything and it was reliant on the glue that had been smacked in here which of course had burst all the glue away so this is all floating free and that was just attached by being welded to the end of the cross member so I cut that out that's gone and I've made a new one which is quite a lot bigger and that will weld into there we can get it flush so we can put an angle over the top we can get a host of fresh rivets into that the black marks are where the old rivet holes are just there's no point in hitting them with a new rivet because it won't do any good and that will be glued welded on very carefully so as not to put any heat in and lots of rivets and that will be stronger than ever it was so simple fix very happy with that one there's a bit of a bigger problem though and I did say that we were going to look at another fix that we're working on. And the problem is we've got bits like this where no amount of the King's resin is gonna put that back together again. So we've got to use something a bit different on this. And this is what we've decided to use. This wonderful substance is unexpanded aluminium core. It looks like a solid block, but it's actually honeycomb. And it stretches out like a big accordion into that. But we couldn't get the thickness we needed to make those repairs. So this has been cheese wired down, slice taken off the side so that it fits, which is all very clever. But there's too much to tell in this film. So we're gonna have a go at making this work and we'll let you know how that goes on the next one. Well, I hope some of that was interesting. I hope some of it might be useful. Don't forget to dive into the comments and let us know what you think. And please subscribe and as ever, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.